you know, I've done a lot of videos on certain indicators from someone's body, whether their skin or looking at their eyes or their lips to determine what's going on on the inside. Well, today we're going to talk about the relationship between someone's skin and diabetes. Now, their skin reveals a lot. At the end of this video, you'll be able to glance over at someone, look at their skin, and pretty much know if they have diabetes or not. And of course, you can apply this to yourself. If you have any of these skin problems, um, I'm going to tell you what to do. But here's the big problem I see with diabetes in general, okay? Medicine's goal is to help manage and regulate blood sugars. So you are given certain medications to help normalize your blood sugar. Well, pretty much problem solved. If we could just manage your blood sugars, you'll be okay. But my question is like, what do you mean manage blood sugars? Well, you're lowering the blood sugars to a normal level, right? Just like you would do with high blood pressure and medication. But the question I have is, where is this sugar going that you're managing or you're lowering? Is it evaporating or is it just going from one place to another? And the answer is, it's going from one place to another. It's going from your blood to other parts of your body, like your liver, like your organs. It's being converted to fat as a fatty liver. So it's not correcting anything. It's just transferring one problem to another problem. So there's two main issues with diabetes in relationship to your skin. One problem with the high blood glucose directly affecting your skin or even indirectly. And then you have other problems related to the hormone that is involved with diabetes called insulin. So let's start with the insulin part first. Insulin is a glucose lowering hormone, okay? When you have high blood glucose, you also will have, at least initially, a very high level of insulin to counter this blood glucose level. Not to mention the body will start to develop insulin resistance, which is gonna send information back to the pancreas saying we need to increase more insulin to fight or penetrate this resistance. With diabetes and prediabetes, you usually always have a higher level of insulin. It's really tested. Uh, mainly they focus on the blood glucose, okay? But if they were to test someone's insulin, they, it would be higher until the point where the pancreas becomes so exhausted that it can't output insulin and then it starts going down. At that point, the person needs to start taking insulin, unfortunately, but that's a different subject. So when we have higher levels of insulin and insulin resistance, uh, one common uh, symptom of that related to the skin, it's called acanthosis nigracans. This is actually one of the common symptoms of insulin resistance. And it's a situation where your skin is darkening, it's looking tanner, and it almost has a, a velvet uh, texture to it. It mainly accumulates in the different folds of the body, armpits, the side of the neck, the back of the neck, the different folds uh, like um, the crease uh, in your elbow. And this is occurring because of a cell called the melanocyte, which makes melanin, which is the pigment of someone's skin. Insulin resistance causes an overproduction of this cell. Okay, so that's uh, the first skin problem. The second skin problem I'm gonna talk about related to insulin is the skin tags. So insulin is an anabolic hormone. And when you produce too much insulin, okay, it makes things grow. It makes these mini tumors. And so a skin tag is a benign growth. And so that's the connection to a skin tag. We have increased insulin, increase growth. And by the way, if you want to know how to get rid of skin tags pretty fast, I'll put a link down below. All right, the next skin problem is called digital sclerosis. And this is just a skin condition where your skin is thicker, okay? The texture is rough and you probably have some dryness, you have some flakiness, and this is also coming from elevated insulin in your blood. And so your skin cells have these little cells called keratinocytes. So insulin affects these cells. It makes them grow in an abnormal way, giving you a thicker or rougher skin. And I would also um, venture to say that it's probably also involved in corns, like having a corn on your skin. All right, the next condition that's affected by insulin is just acne. When you have increased insulin, and this especially occurs in females, okay, especially with polycystic ovarian syndrome, where you have this high level of androgen, uh, which is affecting the sebaceous gland or the oil gland of the skin, 
uh, increasing risk of getting acne. So what's behind an elevated androgen is an elevated insulin. So PCOS is really an elevation of insulin causing the elevation of androgen and uh, acne is just one of the symptoms. Now, another thing about insulin resistance and blood sugars as well is what it can do to the immune system. It can lower the person's immune system, increasing the risk for infections. And certain type of bacterial infections can lead to cysts, like a Baker cyst, for example. And I've noticed in practice, a very high percentage of people who have Baker cysts are also diabetics. And so this involves the relationship between what blood sugar does to your immune system. Now let's just talk about blood glucose level. When the blood glucose level goes high, you can develop a lot of problems with circulation to the skin, okay? And so when the tiny capillaries are affected in the lower part of your legs, for example, um, you can develop these little red or purple dots or blotches, which is called petechia or purpura. So petechia are the real small little red purple dots and purpura are the larger ones. But this is a problem with circulation because the capillary beds are being destroyed and you're getting this uh, leaking blood into the tissue. So you usually see this in the lower legs of diabetics where they have uh, all these different um, black and blue marks. It looks like there's bruised but that's just really coming because the high level of glucose uh, really destroys both the microcirculation, okay, the tiny capillaries, as well as the macrocirculations, your blood vessels in general. So you're losing oxygen and blood flow to the tissues, starting with the peripheral part of the body first, like it happens in the feet and then the lower uh, ankles. So that leads us to the next condition, which is gangrene, um, which your feet and your toes start to turn different colors like green, black, brown, blue. This is a severe diabetic complication from just basically causing your tissues to die, okay? And then it, they start amputating your foot and they, it starts to spread up higher and higher and higher till they could end up amputating the entire leg. And a certain type of gangrene called wet gangrene has uh, an infection component to it as well. So now we have an infection, all because of loss of blood flow, because the blood glucose is just too high. Now, you can also get leg ulcers or ulcers in the foot from being a diabetic. And this too is caused from poor circulation and an infection because the immune system is inhibited when you have this condition. Another condition that you can easily observe a blood sugar problem, not just diabetes or even prediabetes, but even the condition that happens before that, which is insulin resistance. If you look at the person's eyes, they look swollen and puffy and red. I'm talking about the eyelids. And I had a bit of this long ago, and I did not have a clue of where that was coming from. You know, the eyelids, if they're puffy, uh, could be a kidney problem. But what is the number one cause of kidney failure? It's diabetes. So with diabetes and prediabetes, you have a lot of fluid retention that shows up in the eyes. It can also show up in the lower legs and feet. So I just gave you quite a few different skin conditions related to both blood sugars and insulin. But my question always comes down to, boy, there is so much focus on treating the symptom in diagnosing these conditions, but very little energy or focus on treating the diabetes itself, the high blood glucose, and what causes that. So I don't know, it's just, uh, it's wild to me that this obvious problem of consuming too much sugar and carbs is not really dealt with or focused on. It's just, it blows my mind. But the more you think about it, it really relates to um, medication. There's a lot of money involved in this condition. And if it really was that easy, uh, there would be entire industries that would not make nearly as much money, both on the medication end and then also here on the food end as well. So if you want to see some dramatic changes in your skin, if you have diabetes, this is what I would do immediately, okay? I would get on a low-carb diet, number one. I would start doing intermittent fasting. Both of those actions right there will create a significant difference pretty quickly. I would also start consuming about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in my water a few times a day. Apple cider vinegar 
has a potent effect on helping someone with blood sugar issues and making insulin more sensitive and in the correction of this insulin resistance problem. And the next thing I would do is take probably one of the most effective herbal versions of metformin, uh, like a natural version of metformin that you can take. It's well studied and it's called berberine. Okay. Now berberine in a study that I'm going to post down below had identical effects on regulating one's blood sugars if you compare it to metformin, but without side effects, and it showed even better effects on cholesterol regulation, triglycerol regulation, improvements in a fatty liver, decrease problems related to your heart, decrease inflammation, as well as improvement in skin conditions related to diabetes, like acne and inflammation. And it's cheaper and has less side effects. So keto, intermittent fasting, apple cider vinegar, and berberine. Now, since berberine is such a heavy hitter when we're dealing with blood sugars, if you haven't seen my video on berberine directly, I put it up right here. Check it out.